I'm Joanna Simpson here at Quant Minds International in Vienna, and joining me now is Jessica James, Managing Director, Senior Quantitative Researcher at Commerce Bank. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Joanna. And why is convexity important to the finance community? Well, the convexity is important to those who buy and sell bonds, and there's this tremendous um, need now for investments that are seen as safe and reliable. And also, with some yield, interest rates are so low. What can you buy that actually has some return? Your bond, bond interest rate are so, so low, it's terrifying. So folk seek to buy bonds that are longer dated because these have a slightly higher interest rate. And you've seen um, extraordinarily long dated bonds being issued. Austria and Italy have both issued 100 year bonds. Now, given the average lifetime of a currency is maybe 30 years, I think that's, that's what it was last time I checked. This is an amazing bond to issue and it's an amazing bond to buy. So why are people buying these long bonds? Well, first of all, they want yields, but also long dated bonds have high convexity. Now, convexity is a property of a bond that means the bond holder gets a little bit more value in active markets than you would expect from a simple calculation. So long dated bonds have this advantage. So convexity is now more important than it ever was because people are pushing out so far along the yield curve to try and get yield that they're hitting these very high convexity situations. And why is it only ever discussed in a qualitative manner? I mean, that, that's a great question because you hear people saying, oh, folk are buying this bond because it has high convexity and nobody ever puts a number on it. They never say, well, this convexity is maybe going to be worth 5% of its value or 10% of its value. Why not? The answer is that convexity is really quite difficult to calculate. You can do it with numerical methods, you can do it with kind of finite differences, but it, well, until now anyway, there hasn't really been a good way of just writing it out with a formula. And so what I'm actually talking about is that I managed to find a, a proper closed form solution for convexity in terms of coupon yield and tenor of the bond. Now it's very long, but that doesn't matter once you've plugged it into your spreadsheet. So it's actually really quite simple to say, okay, this bond, its, pro it's convexity is probably worth this. And you don't have to have a, 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 a set of finance difference calculations. You can just put it into a formula. And this is really very useful. It turns out that the driver of convexity is implied swap and volatility. Why is that the driver? Well, it's the market's estimate of how active markets are going to be in the future. Now, bond convexity is valuable when markets are very active. So that's the driver of the, the, the apparent convexity that a bond will have. And so what's the one thing that you would like people to take away from your talk? That you actually, you, you can do this and you should do this. It's a calculation, a calculation that people should do. Don't buy a bond just because you think it has high convexity. Work it out. Um, the other thing you can do is look at the implied convexity which you calculate when you buy the bond, but also look at the delivered convexity of similar long dated bonds, because you can do that. It turns out that the delivered convexity is actually largely determined by the change in yield, that is, the market actual activity. So the more active the markets were, the more your convexity benefited you. So convexity, again, it's a great thing to have if you're worried about market activity in the future. So that does explain, I think, a large part of why people are willing to take risk on these super long dated bonds. Jessica James, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Joanna.